Hey, how's everybody doing? Elric here once again on motherboards.org and today we're bringing you the full review, unboxing, benchmarks, you name it, you got it, baby review of the new Gigabyte. That's right, the Gigabyte G1 Sniper 3. This is off the Z77 platform. It's pretty much their top of the line motherboard and it's got a lot of cool features and it has a pretty decent price tag on it as well. So that said, let's jump in and let's first do the unboxing and see what comes in the damn thing. So let's first off take a look at the box before we actually see what comes inside of it. We can see this is the Gigabyte G1 Killer Gaming Motherboard. This is the G1 Sniper 3. On the front of the box we can see there's all kinds of features that are unique to this motherboard. Their Killer E2200, this is one of their onboard NICs. They have their new Soundcore 3D which is by Creative, shows 4-way crossfire, 4-way SLI. You can see there's a Bluetooth connector in there which supports Wi-Fi, so it's going to be a little breakout card you get. Virtue MVP, this is when you use your card in conjunction with the onboard graphics of obviously the Ivy Bridge processor. This is LGA 1155, supports all the latest Ivy Bridge processors, including the 3770, which we use in this review. Features 3D power, which is their all digital engine. This is like basically all the things that you see on motherboards as far as power conditioning go. Then their 3D BIOS. This is inside the dual UFI BIOS. There's a little switch actually we'll see on the motherboard. We switch between them. Here we can take a look at the back of the box real quick. Up in the top left corner, it says code name G1 Sniper. This is obviously one of their ultra four durable motherboards. There's a lot of stuff that's on the back here, but we're actually gonna talk about that on the motherboard itself. So let's jump in and let's start looking at the stuff that comes in this new G1 Sniper 3. As far as what comes in the box, obviously you're gonna get the G1 Sniper 3 motherboard itself. You're also gonna get the motherboard driver disc, the user's manual, the quick installation guide, two SATA 6 gigabit a second cables, two SATA 3 gigabit a second cables, one SATA bracket, that's the external I.O. bracket, an I.O. shield, one two-way SLI bridge connector, one three-way SLI bridge connector, and one four-way SLI bridge connector. There's also one two-way crossfire bridge connector, one 3.5 front panel with two USB 3.0, 2.0 ports. We then get the Wi-Fi PCI card. This is the GCWD300D. And last but not least, we get two awesome cool posters and a lot of cool stickers. Now that we're taking a look at the motherboard, right off the bat, we can see that these guys use their own original color scheme. The green and black, you either love it or you hate it. Reminds me of old school Kawasaki motorcycles. Now, this motherboard is based on the XL ATX form factor. It means it's bigger than standard motherboards. Should fit in many cases, but just make sure you check before you go trying to stick it in something that ends up being too big. Now, right off the bat, we're gonna talk about the fan headers. This motherboard has five what they call smart fan headers. We have two that are right here above the ZIF socket, another one to the right of the ZIF socket, and then two more at the bottom of the board. These are pretty well located and they could be used for a lot of different things. Then let's go and let's talk about the ZIF socket area. We can see this is LGA 1155. It says that right there up to the right of the ZIF socket. And all around the board right here, you can see they use their high seat caps, their solid ferrite chokes, and their very good MOSFETs. There's also a lot of area around the ZIF sockets to be able to put an aftermarket cooler if so need be. Next, let's take a look at the cooling solution. It begins its way around the top, snakes its way all the way around and all the way down onto what would be traditionally the south bridge. As far as power goes, Let's take a look. The first 8-pin power is up here to the left of the ZIF socket, and the traditional 24-pin power is over here to the right. Now, there's also a new power connector on this motherboard located right below the 24-pin power connector. This is the new ATX4P connector. This works off a standard SATA connection on your power supply, and Gigabyte suggests that if you use two or more video cards that you hook this power connection up to ensure the stability of the motherboard. Jumping back up on the motherboard, you can see that the memory slots are color-coded green, black, green, black. This motherboard supports up to 32 gigabytes of DDR3 memory. One thing strange, though, is that it says it only supports memory speeds up to 1600 megahertz. If that's true, that's really quite slow compared to some of the other motherboards that are out there on the market that support up to 2400 megahertz and more. Jumping to the right of the memory, we can see there are three smart buttons. The CMOS, the reset, and the start button. And then right below that, we can see there's a little thing with two little numbers on there. This actually gives you a series of numbers and there's any problems on your motherboard, it'll give you an error code telling you what it is. 
To the right of that, you can see there's a bunch of little stencil marks on the motherboard. This is where you can actually hook up a voltage meter and read the different voltages of the motherboard via those connections. You just hook your voltage meter up to those directly and get your voltage meter right from them. Dropping down the motherboard and right next to the 24-pin power connector, we see we have the USB 3.0 header. This is for the breakout box that we showed you earlier when we showed you the contents. Let's jump over now and let's see all of the expansion slots. We can see that we have one, two, three, four PCIe slots. These are 16, 8, 16, 8. As far as standard PCI connectors, we have a single one here and then we have two PCIe 1X connectors located right here. It's also suggested that if you're using two cards in either Crossfire or SLI configuration, that you stick to using the number one slot and the number three slot, which are both 16X slots. Now let's jump over to the SATA ports. But before we actually take a look at the SATA ports, let's take a look at this interesting new connection that's right behind them. This is the new mSATA port. You can actually get rid of using your traditional standard SSD by just putting a little mSATA SSD in here, eliminating the use for that device altogether. You can put your OS and all that stuff right here. Also, on the SATA connections, something to be noted. SATA port 5 will actually be disabled if you engage the mSATA port. As far as the rest of them go, the first six are based off of the Intel controller. The first ports in white are SATA 3. The ones in black are SATA 2. And then these gray ports down here, we have an additional four. These are based off the Marvel controller, and they're also SATA 3. As we move down and around the bottom of the motherboard, we can see that we have an additional USB 3.0 header. This is pretty cool because if you have a case that has that connection, you can just plug it right in there, get your breakout box and those connection as well. Moving down, we have the trusted platform module connector. And then we have the SW4 switch. Some people are gonna ask what this is. There's actually dual BIOS on this motherboard. You have your main BIOS and your backup BIOS. By switching the SW4, you're switching between which BIOS you're using. So if you flash one and it gets corrupted, you can switch to the other one and still boot your board and able to repair the other one. Pretty cool stuff. Next up on the board, we see the little header where all the wires go from your case to hook up on there. Next to that, we have two USB headers. Then we have two FireWire headers. Sliding on down, we have an F audio header. As we keep going around the board, next up we come to the audio solution. This board uses the Creative CAD132 chip and has support for the Sound Blaster Recon 3DI audio. Both the green capacitors and these little gold capacitors you see there and this little chip that's in between them are all part of the audio system of the motherboard. And lastly, let's take a look at the rear I.O. The rear I.O. on this motherboard is actually quite unique in itself. You can see right off to the far left hand side, we have a legacy keyboard mouse port. That itself is kind of cool. Then you're going to notice that there are absolutely no old school USB 2.0 connections whatsoever. There are six USB 3.0 connections and those are plainly evident. We also have two LAN ports, one supported by the killer NIC, one supported by the Intel NIC. It also supports teaming. As far as all of the external connections go, you have a lot of connections on this that are all based for your video. Standard BGA, DVI, neither of these provide sound. Then you also have your HDMI and your display port. These do provide sound. To the far right of the rear I.O., we can see the analog audio ports and the SPDIF connection. So this is a very interesting rear I.O. So now that we've seen the layout and the features of this motherboard, let's get ready to rock and let's check out the benchmarks. Alright folks, so you guys seen it. The unboxing, the features, the benchmarks, and when it comes to making a buying decision, there's a lot of things that people look at. So. 
This motherboard does have quite a lot of features, and with the price tag coming in at $279 and being the top end board from Gigabyte, it's a pretty solid board. If you like the color scheme, that's even going to be better for you. If you hate the color scheme, well then obviously you're not going to be down with this motherboard. Previously in these motherboards, they had a shape like a gun and all of them, and a lot of people said that was very childish. You guys can see the Gigabyte has now removed that and actually just based the board with a more solid amount of features built into the motherboard. All motherboards perform within a 1 to 5% differentiation when you're talking about on the same chipset. So basically any Z77 motherboard is only going to have a 1 to 5% differential. So that means that features are what makes the motherboard stand out. This motherboard has quite a lot of them. There's only a few other motherboards in the Z77 platform at all that do better than this. So I'd say at the end of the day, Gigabyte's done a really good job with this new G1 Sniper 3. They've eliminated some of the over-the-top stuff they had in the past, segregated this stuff into a just nice, better package, and given you a board that's quite affordable. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here on motherboards.org later.